rejections and the letdowns. Now it's hard to make it through the crowd. I miss Just for who you are, oh Father and King, you are everything, you are everything, just for who you are. <laughs> Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. I'm thinking, what if I were to pull that down? If I pull that down, then you guys are probably going to hear me a lot better. Um, and see, then you'll be able to hear my breath, everything, me breathing into the mic is so much worse. If I don't put my screen there, I know this. I'm trying to still satisfy this woman that complained about my mouth being covered. You know, my partner, of course, says, yeah, why is your mouth covered? You know, why is your mouth covered? You are, um, you got some sexy lips, your mouth shouldn't be covered, blah, 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 blah. Of course, that's what he says. But um, like I said before, I do have some insecurities. So that's just me. Anyway, hey, y'all, this is, wait a minute, wait the hell a minute. Wait the hell a minute. Oh, okay. So I couldn't figure out what the heck is going on with my mic, what's going on with the sound, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, so this is a regular Urban Binge show. Welcome, guys, to the Urban Binge. I am your boy, Rico Bellucci. Um, and here at the Urban Bench, Urban Bench Radio, guys, if you guys are listening, we just talk about urban news, celebrity culture news, um, just, we just chat, just talk about trending shit, shit that's trending, um, just all around, you know what I'm saying? And then I turn around and I do a Sunday show. Haters like, am I going to hell for the things that I could wear? I ain't going to hide my blessings when I know it made away.
which is where I play gospel music um, and I give an inspirational vitamin. And then I turn right back around and come on this show and I get the damn cussing and shit. See? My baby love, not my baby love. Yes, my baby love. Anyway, guys, um, I got to put the screen back up there because that's the only way you guys are not going to see hear my breathing and the extra shit so loud in the mic. It's with this screen over it. It's a lightsaber, I'm telling you. You guys don't believe me, it is. Anyway, so um, there's a lot of things to talk about. A lot of things we don't really have to talk about, but we're going to talk about it. anyway. Um, excuse my enthusiasm. If my enthusiasm seems down, then excuse me, okay? I'm not down. I'm probably a little litty, but I'm not down. Um, anyway, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Make sure you guys hit that bell. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up, please. If you came across this video, it's not so hard. Just hit the thumbs up, please. Like, even if you don't like the video, hit the thumbs up. And Gary with the T done stole my shit. I say that, and that Gary ass done took it. It's jewel. So remember, honey, if you like this show, click like. And if you don't like it, click like, okay? Because, honey, I like you. So your ass better like back. And remember, you can find me wherever podcast is served or wherever you want to find your podcast. You can definitely find Gary's tea. Okay? Yeah, if you don't like this video, then I'm like, motherfucker, how about you get on here and do some hot topics with me then? And I am going to hit him up and ask him, because don't be like that. Come on, Gary. You can you can do a show with me. He might be like, well, are you going to do a show with me? Yes, I will, Gary with the tea. Because Gary with the tea um, got the top, I mean, got the, got a good show. I love his podcast. I love his podcast with his ladies. Um, I forget the name of that one. Um, I, yeah, I said it. Podcast and um, Gary's T podcast. They really be doing the thing. Um, I love Gary's T podcast. They be doing it. Anyway, guys, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. I can't stress it enough that I want you to hit that thumbs up. Anyway, so look, y'all know it's a new network, um, Fox Soul. Everybody is like tuned into Fox Soul. Everybody is tuned into YouTube in general, okay? Like, everybody wanna be on YouTube now. Everybody wanna be on YouTube, everybody wanna be watching YouTube. YouTube, 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 right? YouTube, hi YouTube. Subscribe guys, please, anyway. Um, and so they have the network Fox. So a lot of people don't even know that that's still Fox, okay? But people that don't like Fox think that Fox is so conservative, they're so racist, they're biased, whatever, blah, 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 blah. You're still watching Fox, an entity of Fox, still Fox, Fox and Fox. So they're all the same. Even Fox where Empire was, still owned by the same people. So if you don't know, now you know. If you didn't know, now you know. Anyway, um, Fox Soul on YouTube has a show with um, Claudia Jordan. Um, and Claudia, actually, you know what? They have several shows with Claudia Jordan to the point where I'd be like, is Claudia fucking the program guy over there or the guy who says what goes and what doesn't? Because she has been with Fox Soul for a long time and she has had a lot of shows on Fox Show on Fox Soul. So um, it kind of makes me wonder is poor, uh, not Portia. Ooh, she doesn't like Portia that much. Um, is Claudia busting it open for the uh, head man at Fox Soul? Because she seemed like she is perked up. Okay. Anyway, um, Fox Soul recently, you know, they have a show, Claudia Jordan has a couple of shows on there, but one of her shows that she has on there is um, Cocktail with Queens, and that's featuring um, Vivica Fox, herself, Lisa Ray, and Selena Johnson, the R&B singer Selena Johnson. All of them are on there together, and they just basically talk about hot topics, trending news, give their opinions on these hot topics and trending news, um, and um, they have several shows like that on Fox Soul, like several um and so they had recently columbus short on the show and you know um recently columbus short was in a big old mess where he was accused of domestic violence and how many times has that happened several times of course columbus short has been in trouble for domestic violence several times so this time he gets in trouble for domestic violence everybody accepts him back in and i guess because um his girlfriend or the girl who had these <clears throat> charges pressed on him are um it's kind of like backing off and retracting um i guess her statement or how she felt initially welcome back to cocktails with the queens we are excited to have a special guest on the show joining us tonight columbus short thank you columbus for being here 
Thank you guys for having me. Uh, all you beautiful queens, my sisters. <laughs> okay, Columbus, listen, let's just jump right into it, okay? Um, before we talk about what you've been up to in your amazing career, and listen, no one can argue about your talent as an actor. You are one of the best actors I've ever seen on the screen. You are effortless. You are effortless and so believable and so real. Um, we want to talk about the recent headlines you've been involved in. Yeah. I'm just gonna, what happened? Well, because me and my wife are actively trying to get the case thrown out, this is ridiculous. Um, you know, I can say, this is what I can say, if I'm being fully transparent. There was an incident, which was neither her being physically violent, because physically violent to me, or nor me to her. Um, but the piece was called. Um, and, you know, I've been going through a lot in the last month, finding out who I am, like for real, like who I am, um, family dynamics and, you know, emotions were high and, you know, my emotions were high, all of that stuff, but the police. Um, so no longer is she uh, wanting to pursue uh, charges against her a, a fiance, husband, boyfriend, I don't know what they are to each other. Um, she comes on Fox Soul and she says, no, I'm perfectly fine. Um, everything is going well with us. We're okay. Um, and it wasn't like that. They made it a big deal, blah, 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 blah. He clearly, to me, looks very awkward. You know, emotions were high and, you know, my emotions were high, all of that stuff. But the police uh, came here and, um, oh, yeah, that's my baby boy up there. I'm not going to go get him. Um, <laughs> uh, they, <laughs> they, um, um, they, they came here and be, they didn't want to take either one of us, but be, they looked at my, you know, my history, you know, this you know, uh, supposed domestic violence. And then, you know, they were here for like an hour and a half trying to figure out, do we take some, but we can't, you know what I mean? Like, what do we do? And so they took me in and I want to say this, like, I don't want to, you know, my wife is Armenian and I don't want to make it seem like they took me because I'm a black man. I don't want to play that card, right? Because the LAPD did treat me like a gentleman. They treated me with respect. Um, and they, you know, they got me in and they got me out. They, it was it was ridiculous. But so there was no charges pressed. Um, and then I jumped out the window, I think, you know, because um, I heard from Kiki Tyson, who's like my big sister, like one of you guys, she called my wife and said, hey, TMZ's told us this is coming down the pike. Um, but, and I was like, man, TMZ again. And really my, my frustration, I was like, the last time I went through this, I never, everybody told me to shut up. And you know, there, there, it wasn't true what was being said and I never defended myself, nor did anybody else. So I, I was like, you know what? I, I clicked out PTSD, you know, the old trauma. It's a lot of anxiety I, I've, I've carried from that last experience. And so, you know, every time a headline comes out, you know, I'm, I, I go into these panic attacks. And so I'm like, man, let me get out in front of this thing, which wasn't the best. I wasn't I wasn't advised to do that. I just did that. And, you know, I think that wasn't the best thing but to do. But I mean, I was like, I said it. And you know what? I stopped the press because they they tucked that story because, they, you know, let us. The thing about TMZ is I've done so much work in my career. And for all of those years, I wasn't on, I didn't get no GQs. I wasn't in. no You know, I didn't get no press like I didn't. I was like nobody knew unless they saw my work that I was working. Um, and then all of a sudden it's like, I, you know, I'm more famous for being an alleged abuser than I am for the work that I really put in my entire life. And Plus, so, if you think you're damned if you do, damned if you don't when you're a celeb, if you speak on it, it's like, why are you giving it attention if you don't? Because I have to read the headline for those that don't know. It says, former scandal star Columbus Shore charged with two misdemeanors after domestic violence arrest. So you heard about this and you went to your, your social media. Do you feel do you feel like you, you can't win if you get ahead of Do you think it helped you in the, in the I mean, end? Honestly, at this point, guys, I'm probably getting completely transparent. I don't give AF anymore about because the job is not i used to think it's like i gotta you know this these career goals and i was very career goal only oriented and you know movies and tv and look what's going on in the world like my position my job is bigger than entertainment and it's bigger it's about the community and it's about um i'm doing all this work you know that that and i think that's why you know let me just say the devil's a liar like as i'm doing all of this stuff that nobody sees you know there's got to be some, some because we're doing big things um for the world and you know i think there's that that natural spiritual warfare that we're dealing with so you know it, it, I just don't care. Like, I, but I do want to be decent. I want to do everything decently in order. So, you know, and I do have a, I do have a system like you guys are sisters. If so one of you guys called me and said, hey, Columbus, I, I have to be obedient to the instructions that you give me because I respect you as my sister, right? right? So that's where we are, you know, and my brothers that, are, you know, I'm, I, I thought I was alone in the world and realizing I'm not has been a blessing. I just, I just want to have, I just want a quick question because you spoke on something that is very important as a black man. You, you, you sat here and you talked about PTSD and anxiety. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a real thing. And black men are, are just now starting to, you know, speak on this. So what are you doing to control or, you know, um, get a hold of your PTSD? And great question. Are you seeing someone? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So, and I'm proud. I, you know, I have, I got this wonderful uh, therapist. Um, he's wonderful. And, you know, we, I hadn't, I, I had another one before and now I'm with this guy. 
And it's like being able to unpack these things, right? Um, I got in a wonderful experience with Dr. Amen at the Dr. Amen Clinic last, last week, um, Dr. Jeff Faber, and they, you know, I got to see my brain. You know what I'm saying? And so I flew, like I flew through a windshield of a car when I was 16, you know, I played football and I got to see my brain, you know, there's things in your brain that, you know, these are things that if we don't go unaddressed, you know, they can, they trigger things, trigger emotional stuff. You know what I mean? And, you know, the back of my brain is Gucci. That's how I remember lying so quick. And, 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 you know, <laughs> okay. so, the front, did the front, we got to get the front together. So I seen those things and talking to him um, and my, my therapist, you know, they, cause everybody wanted to know what's up. Like, is he crazy? Is he this? And getting a real diagnosis of, of, uh, PTSD, generalized, I um, mean, you know, chronic PTSD and generalized anxiety. It's like, okay, what do we do from here? Right. I, you know, and I do feel those things. Anxiety is real, um, but it all comes from trauma. You know, we all experience trauma and in our right. culture, right, in our culture, and I can't just say our culture, I think a lot of cultures, but I'm finding out now, like I'm tired of black secrets, right? Black families are all these secrets. You know, black families and all this stuff, you sleep under the rug and you find, you know, finding out stuff later when you, you're 39 years old, you, you know, that's all part of the trauma, right? So uh -huh. you know, working through those things is amazing. <clears throat> excuse me, working through those things is amazing with Dr. Stephen Palmer. Um, and uh, he, you know, he's like, he's the best gift I've been gifted um, in, the, in the recent days. Thank you for yeah. talking about that. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. a lot of people don't and, and people will are quick to write people up. Oh, he's just a abuser. He's just a this, mm -hmm. he's just a that. You may, things may show up sometimes like that, but there's also a point of where some of the stuff comes from. So addressing, I didn't know you were well, in well, action. Well, you know, quickly, my name, you know, Columbus Keith Short, I'm Columbus Keith Short Jr. And that, my, that, the name of the man that, you know, I carry his name, you know, he wasn't the best man, you know what I'm saying? And there was a lot of stuff that was attached to his name that, you know, boom, come, you know, and now, you know, as I'm discovering things, it's like, dang, you know, paying for your father's or the man's sins is, is the name, huh. the name, power is in the name. He looks like he is not in a good space right now. He definitely is giving me that a lot of shit is running through his head right now. And he showed his controlling side by telling her, to get somebody up out of there or get something about it. You know, emotions were high and, you know, my emotions were high, all of that stuff. But the police uh, came here and, um, oh, yeah, that's my baby boy up there. I'm not going to go get him. Um, uh, <laughs> they, um, um, they, they came here and be, they didn't want to take either one of us. I'm like, you're still showing your, your aggressive, controlling side without even noticing that you are. I think ultimately, after watching that interview, I think ultimately, after watching that entire interview, um, Columbus Short needs mental any mental value and mental evaluation or he needs some type of mental help or something after watching that video if he don't go back and watch that video and see the mistakes that he made then he is 100% tripping he needs to see how he looked he looked like he's nervous as if he has more to say and can't say it or don't want to say it um, or he's holding back from saying something um, he definitely is giving that you beat this girl ass and that you controlling you definitely giving that you're giving that and with your eyes you're giving that you're scared as fuck and that you're lying like a motherfucker okay so I don't believe shit coming out of his mouth I don't believe shit coming out of her mouth they definitely got into a fight allegedly to me I think they did and I think that he whooped her ass and she is taking back her word he didn't even want her to do this interview he clearly looking like girl go sit the fuck down can you just like get the fuck away? Don't don't stand over here and do this. Uh, the man, power is in the man. Columbus, you know, you know, me and you, we go back, back, you know, and I, I was like really busy at the time that when it came up. To be honest with you, I was just like, Phew. right. I don't want to. I didn't want to call. I didn't want to beat you up about. It. I just had to. See I didn't what, for just uh, a second, and that's why you know I, I sent you the message that I did privately. I, I don't need to beat you up because I believe. You know, sometimes incidents get blown out of proportion. So right. we thank you for being transparent. Absolutely. And, you know, because there's two sides to every story. But I want to switch gears. Let's, let's get back to talent. Because it is what you do. It is your gifts. Your gift, my brother. You are a very, very talented actor. And you have yes. more gifts to give. Yes, ma'am. Okay? I want you to know that. Yes, and, you know, we're going to always be here with love. If you man up and like you did, you accept accountability and responsibility. But I want to get to your talent. So no. I don't know. You know, we are did two to get one, two. I just, I just, I just want to say, I don't care what people talk about. Me and my wife, it's we're, we, are, we are real. This is a real, Good. we're a real thing. We have That's two real. You know yeah. I mean? you know but I mean? you know, in in having a real relationship, it is a partnership, and right. it's called having good communication. That when you feel things are getting heated. And that's someone losing their temper, their temper. And when the cops come, because of the color of your skin, brother, they gon' they gonna want to get you. Y'all, as a couple, have to know that. Right. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, like, I explain that to her well. We're yeah. raising black. We're raising black boys. Too. Exactly. Black. They're right. not unless they're mixed Armenian and black, but they black. They're so they black. got temperature up in there. So <laughs> y'all just to make sure when the damn temperature get hot, somebody say, "Got to take a break." That's that's all I'm asking because that's a partnership. I see love, and we like to see that. Right. This is short. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Hi, ladies. Hi. Um, hi. Sorry, my voice is gone. We had too much fun at the Laker game last night. <clears throat> They're trash. They got their ass kicked, didn't they? <laughs> Girl, like, like they stole something. <laughs> um, you know, I'm doing good. You know, I know that, you know, Vivica, you're absolutely right. You know, when things get a little heated, sometimes we've got to take different, you know, find other constructive ways, you know, to find solutions to, to mitigate yes. the situation. You know? But this all goes back to mental health, right? A lot of us, you know, she's had trauma in her life. And she's just now, and her 36 years, just now sitting down with someone. You know, I'm just, you know, like we, and finding out traumas, I'm like, I didn't know that about you. Right. You know what I mean? Because, you, you know, people don't share. So, you right. know, you know, I don't know her triggers. And she, you know, there's some stuff that I buried deep. I didn't know my triggers. And so, but us now actually figuring out like, oh, you're doing stuff. We always take things personal. Yeah. Like, it's quiet. She's like, why are you not talking to me? You know what I mean? Like, what's going on? And what, what, what? Y'all, women, you guys like to fix things right away. Right. And I like, we can't sometimes. Like, you want to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. still, and you're still learning each other. We're still learning each other, even as an individual. So as a couple, that's even harder and it right. takes longer. Yeah. But I think right now what you all are showcasing, this love, this family, this togetherness, that is what needs to spread because you guys are a union. We and are. So what and my, my bishop, my bishop, who's like, you know, Bishop Charles Dorsey, he, you know, I, I don't go, I don't, he's like my dad, but I'm like, he said, he said, he said, did she weather the storm? She said, she weathered the storm? I said, yeah, she weathered the storm. He said, then you gotta stick with her. You gotta stick with her. Said, okay. see, is, there, is there anything you'd like to say to each other in front? So, you know, I, I, I like things that come from the horse's mouth because I, I, we've all been a victim of people okay. telling us stories. Is there anything you like to say to each other in front of everyone I love that's watching? I love you, I got you. My job is to provide and protect, and that's what I do every day. Yes. I grind very hard every day. Yes. I love on you, I love on them boys. That's my job, that's what I do. Well, I tell you one good thing too, Universal, you love music, because I saw on your Instagram that you've been hashtagging Lavitate uh, 2022. Yeah, so yeah, that's music, like that's music. I come from a music, my music is in my blood. And so, you know, I, I finished, finally finished my album after all these years, and she's been, you know, and she's been a huge factor. Okay, we gotta get them. Yeah. Okay. Oh wait, we didn't get to hear. We didn't get to hear from her though. Oh, yeah. Hi. Say first of all, thank you, ladies, for providing the platform for us to be able to voice, you know, our feelings and emotions and our traumas and, and everything, you know, the good, bad, and the ugly. So thank you for that. And I want to do, and I really do sincerely want to say, you know, that I'm so proud of him. Not, not, not in an artificial sense. Truly, as a man that he, you know, he's really, big, you know, become. I've known him for 14 years, and that's not a, you know, little bit of time. It's a long time. And so to see him mature into who he's, you know, into his purpose and me and mine, you know, it's just beautiful to see that we can build a beautiful family. You know, we're gonna have bumps here and there, but I feel like, you know, if we stick together, we communicate, we respect each other. I think there's no reason why we shouldn't make it. You know, I raised two amazing kids. It doesn't matter the color, it doesn't matter where they're from or what it is. I think if we give them that love, genuine love. As long as they're good human beings, because we are good human beings, you know what I mean. So I think that if we instill that in them, then, you know, we're winning. And I love you very much. Love you. God bless you. Thank you for your time, Queen. Thank you. And really, more importantly, thank you for y'all transparency. Because, yeah. You know, we, we are here to offer love and support. As Lisa Ray said, shit happens. Right. So just learn that when the temperature rising. Yeah, you see here. We're gonna keep going. Okay. All right, but now let's go to a little bit of career. All right, yeah. because you know me and you done made two to game one, two or three, and I don't know. I you just now telling me that Lisa Ray was your first choice, okay? <laughs> Wait. That's all right. That's all right. No, that's, no. All right. that's all right. So what was the best part? Of making, no, no, that's messy. Hey, no, hold on. Messy. What was the best part messy. of making two to the game besides coming to your girl Via? <laughs> and the music, you know, because I, I I think that that's yeah, so. So yes, the music has been. So here, here's the thing, and I know we're running out of time. So I'm like, look, when I was kind of the rug was pulled out from under me with me with scandal, you know, it's been it's been a hard road for me. I was always trying to like please Hollywood and like try to get back my spot. I'm like, anyway, to get off that topic, that's all I was trying to say. That he looked crazy as fuck, and that he need to um, probably reevaluate when he do these interviews. Either your girl gonna get in the camera or she not. Either you with your girl getting in the camera or not. And y'all need to nip that in the bud before the cameras come on because that didn't look right. Y'all did not look like that y'all was prepared for that. Definitely not Columbus, because the way he looking in his eyes is like, bitch, I will knock your eyes out your socket if you say the wrong thing. I'm looking at him like, damn. You seem real tense when she came over here, and you gave me that, um, you know, you real, like, look, bitch, what you finna say? As if, like, she, listen, something crazy is gonna come out again with him and this girl and or she's going to end up coming out saying something but she's definitely being abused uh, let me not let, listen let me say allegedly 
Okay. She's allegedly being abused, and I strongly believe that she is as well. I strongly believe that she is as well, but she may not be. She said it wasn't the way that they made it seem like in the police report. Girl, I heard it all before. Heard it all before, okay? Anyway, um, speaking of Fox, so they have another show, TGIF, okay? So they have Cocktails with Queens that Claudia Jordan is like the lead bitch over. And then not only that, they have um, this um, this other show that they just came out with, uh, TGIF, not just came out with, they've been out for a while. And um, Gary with the T was on that, but he, got, he was removed off the show because of Ricky Smiley and Claudia Jordan's um, arguments that they have often. But, um, or that, you know, the dislike, disdain that they have for each other because they used to be friends. But that's another story for another day. Claudia Jordan and Ricky Smiley beef. If y'all want to hear about that, just tell me about that. Go Google that, okay? Google that. Anyway, um, but Funky Dineva is a host on that show with Al Reynolds and Claudia Jordan. Uh, another show she hosts on Fox Soul. And I just wanted to say that Funky Dineva is a fucking legend. The nigga been doing this shit for a long time. He may not have the best looks. But over time, his personality will make you feel like, hmm, I can date this guy. And over time, I have watched Funky Dineva for many, 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 many years. Almost 10 years, if not 10 years. I've been watching him. And um, he's so consistent with his um, reviews and not consistent with his reviews because that bitch will skip. We'll do one day of a review, one episode, and skip all the way to season six and won't do nothing. Like, you be like, bitch, you watch season one and then came back for season four to give us a review. What happened to season three and two? Or two and three? That's just be funky. So I don't mean consistent in that way. I mean consistent as in um, his commentary, the words that come out of his mouth, and his attitude towards situations never change um if he feel this way um eight years ago he gonna feel this way five years ago and if he does not feel that way he is going to let us know why he does not feel that way anymore um so nothing don't be like oh fuck it i need this contradicting it don't be like that because it don't be like that you know what i mean so um i just wanted to throw that out there that funky Daniva is a fucking legend that nigga been doing this shit for a long time honestly for a very long time he's honestly a legend um and I just wanted to throw that out there. Like, we need to give Funky Daniva his fucking flowers, YouTube. Because uh, he really been doing a damn thing. He he really influenced a lot of people to come to YouTube. And I think people like him should get a raise on YouTube. Because they have really um, invested a lot of time into YouTube. And um, their payout should be um, more than any old regular person who just started and all of a sudden has the fan base that they garnered over that Funky Dineva or people who've been around as long as Funky Dineva garnered in a long period of time and these new people come on here and all of a sudden have these subscribers and shit um, and they get all these accolades um, but it's legends on YouTube that have been on YouTube since YouTube cracked open since they became available to um, the United States public um, there are YouTube people um, and YouTube personalities that have been around for many, 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 many years. Um, and I just wanted to throw that out there and give him his fucking flowers because he definitely deserves them. Um, anyway, I want to move on. Um, I wanted to move on and say, speaking of also of Funky Dineva and being a creative um, in YouTube, um, I realized that a lot of people are becoming creative um, during this pandemic. Like, honestly, um, the pandemic has really made people feel like, okay, let me get up off my feet. I mean, off my butt and um, go out here and find something to do. What do I love to do? What do I love to do? Let me go out here and put my best foot forward on it. And let's just hope that I can do it, right? Um, and a lot of people have done that. Um, I mean, a lot of people. When I scroll down my Facebook, all I see is entrepreneurship. Honestly, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. So um, I look at myself and I say, dang, I really, during the pandemic, I hopped on it. I started this YouTube channel 
um, right before the pandemic popped off. I already had this YouTube channel, but I kind of started getting serious with the content um, right before the pandemic pop popped off, like 2019, sometime in 2019, um, end of 2019, December maybe. Um, and um, after that, I kind of moved on and wanted to convert my YouTube channel um, and do a conjunction and put it with um, my podcast. I wanted to create a podcast. So not only do I have a YouTube channel, I created a podcast, the Urban Binge Radio. So we have Rebel TV, which is a network I created um, that I want to put several pieces of content on. I don't want it to just be reviews. I want um, Rebel TV. I created it um, to be kind of like Fox O. Before Fox O even came out, I created Rebel TV in hopes that I could do just what Fox O has come out to do. Um, I wanted to put different kind of content on there that geared towards one particular audience, if you know what I mean, kind of like Vox and these other channels that have a variety of content, but the, the co overall content that they have gears towards uh, 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 a variety of people that is um, closed in to them, if you get what I'm saying. They are um, drawn into Vox, and um, this is Vox's fan group, you know what I mean? And um, everything that they put on Box, the fan group love. They cause other people to come in who may love it, and they end up watching Box and these other channels and everything. So, um, you know, that's that that's further than um, building a audience for a certain type of video that you want to do. That's building an audience for the channel as an overall. Um, and that's what I was trying to do, but Fox Soul came and beat me to the punch. But that doesn't mean I can't still do it, which I still want to do it, and I still try to do it. Um, it's just a lot of work. Um, so, of course, like I said, um, I have the YouTube channel that I'm trying to promote daily, um, promote videos daily, and also record daily. Then I have the podcast that I'm trying to, of course, record daily, and um, or try to record daily, and promote daily. <laughs> that I was like you know I need to start well before the podcast I wanted to start a blog um, the urban bench blog where we just talk tight on our website um, like TMZ website just celebrity gossip celebrity news breaking news trending topics trending things trending 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 um, and that's what I wanted to do with the urban bench um, and just you know have a blogging site um, to in conjunction with the urban bench YouTube channel or Rebel TV YouTube channel Rebel TV YouTube channel first show would be the urban bench and I'm trying to add other shows on Rebel TV, if you get what I'm saying. Um, but after that, I decided, okay, so I want the blog. I got the podcast. I got my YouTube channel. Now I want to open up a store. Um, so now we have the Urban Bench Clothing Boutique or the clothing company. <laughs> Urban Bench Clothing Company, a new luxury urban wear boutique offering trendy fashion styles quality pieces with affordable prices. Clothes are to be loved and last long. Our belief here at the Urban Binge Clothing Company. Fashion is the key to confidence. Your beauty is your beautiful, let's just say futuristic fashion for all. Binge Clothing Company. You guys can follow us on Instagram. Um, the Urban Binge Clothing Company where we will have quality, luxury, affordable luxury, or luxury affordable um, women's clothing that is, I'm telling you, immaculate clothes. It's awesome. Awesome. I said clothes. I'm tripping. Clothes. Um, awesome. Like great quality, um, high class type of clothing, but in a very good price range, affordable price range, that is not an arm and the leg, and it's not even an arm. It's probably an elbow, you know what I mean? Um, because I want to make sure that we keep the prices at a certain range um, 
so that people can afford it and really honestly feel like they can get cute because I come from poverty. I come from a place where we didn't have a lot. So I definitely want to be sure that I'm not doing to others what I didn't like. I didn't like that um, clothes that I thought could be a little cheaper was so expensive and I felt like, you know what, they're trying to get over on me. So I definitely don't want to do that to my customers. I want to make sure that we have affordable prices and good, great quality pieces. That's like, is this really this amount? And this is this cute? Oh my God, I gotta get this. This is too cute. You know, that type of thing. Urban Binge Clothing Company, a new luxury urban wear boutique offering trendy fashion styles, quality pieces with affordable prices. Clothes are to be loved and last long. Our belief here at the Urban Binge Clothing Company. Fashion is the key to confidence. Your beauty is your beautiful, let's just say futuristic fashion for all. And I, I have faith that we will. We have a lot of inventory already. So the store is opening up this summer. Make sure you guys follow the Urban Bench Clothing Company so you can know the date, specific date, um, coming soon. The specific date is coming soon. But I do know that we are opening this summer. That's what I can put out there right now, that we are opening up this summer with some badass women's pieces, y'all. Okay, y'all are going to love them. Um, we also have some giveaways that we're going to do. So not only do we have the boutique, not only do we have the podcast, not only do we have the blogging site, not only do we have the YouTube channel, we want to give away some stuff. We have a lot of stuff that we would like to give away, um, stuff that you may need, stuff that you may want to re-gift to someone else. You know, um, just be grateful. If you're going to submit yourself, sign yourself up to be in a giveaway competition or a giveaway raffle um, then be grateful for what the gift is, even if it's a gift that's too small, that you feel is too small. Anyway, we're going to move on so we don't stay on the same thing. But guys, make sure you follow Urban Binge Boutique at Urban Binge Boutique on Instagram and on Facebook, Urban Binge Boutique. Um, make sure you guys go follow at The Urban Binge, T-H-E Urban Binge. That's The Urban Binge, okay? T-H-E Urban Binge. Um, that's the blogging Instagram and Facebook but the clothing Urban Binge is not with the the, okay? Not T-H-E. It's just Urban Binge Boutique. Urban Binge Boutique. At Urban Binge Boutique. Make sure you guys follow us. Um, yes, we do ship overseas. Yes, we do ship, ship, ship all across the U.S. So you can come shop at our store if you're overseas. Yes, you can come on and shop, 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 guys. Please come and support us, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this long-ass ad. Let's just get talking about my own stuff. What better way to promote your to promote your stuff than to promote it yourself, right? Um, if you have a platform to do it, I don't have a big platform, so it's not like I'm like a thousand and thousands of subscribers and followers, and I'm just like balling and doing a damn thing. No, not for me. I wish. Um, anyway, let's this, this 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 is the Urban Binge Radio. If you're listening on the podcast, please hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. Give us five stars for the podcast. Follow the podcast. Download the podcast. Download the podcast, guys. Even if you delete it after you download it, just download the podcast, please. Please download the podcast, okay? Even if you delete it, download the podcast. First of all, listen to the entire, po entire podcast. Listen to it. And then you can download it. You don't even have to listen to it. Just go ahead and download it. If you don't want to listen to it, just go ahead and download the podcast. But I'm telling you, you listen to more boring shit than me. Okay, you listen to more boring shit than me. So what you do is you just hook me up to the radio. You hook me up to your car. You can hook me up to your Echo or whatever you have in your house, your Bluetooth speaker while you're in the shower. And listen to me talk shit. Just listen to me talk for an hour. Shit, I'm not talking that long. Anyway, my guys, make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up. Hit that bell. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Please so much. And um, again, like I said, if you listen to the podcast, give us the five stars. Give us a thumbs up, guys. Um, leave a comment. Let everybody know how great this podcast is. And download the podcast episode. Download as many episodes as you can, even if you have to delete them. Download as many of our episodes as you can. Please, guys, it really helps us out a lot. And it helps us go up and up and up and up and up so that more people can possibly see us. It's not even about money. Um, it's about us being seen. And I'm not doing all this work for nothing. And I'm doing something that I love. I love radio personality. I've already told my story before. If you want to hear my story, you got to go somewhere else and listen to it. You got to go to one of these other videos because I don't talk about that too much. And I'm trying to move the hell on because guess what? Two funny mamas already told y'all about that too so i'm not gonna go too in depth about that so go watch my other videos if you have not heard me talk about two funny mamas two funny mamas is the youtube channel and slash podcast 
<laughs> everybody is doing it now. I started doing that first, I feel like. And then everybody, even all the famous people, the famous people are just flooding YouTube and the podcast networks, um, hosting sites um, over everybody. So it's like, dang, like they're going to be, they're going to take up all the slots. But like Jay said, it's, it's many slots open. In the USA alone, I think USA and Canada, there are 80 million podcasts or 80 million episodes, um, ep podcast episodes in total. And that's like, damn, how do your one episode, if you're a new beginner, a new starter, how does your episode blow up out of the 80 million? Somebody has to look at your picture, first of all, and really like it. Look at your description and really like it. And then say, let me even taste it. And then click play. Hopefully they do. If they don't, then you're fucked. Hell, because it's 80 million episodes or 80 million podcasts that these people can s sift through. You don't mean to tell me that the most popular, most famous ones they don't have in the forefront, yes, they do. And the ones that just started are way in the back, which is so dumb. The ones that are more popular should be in the back. The ones that are just started should be in the front so that they can become popular like the ones that are in the back. Oh, God. But it has to be like that. It's an imbalance in the world if we don't have rich and poor. We don't have bad and good. It's just too imbalanced. We wouldn't be able to deal with it, I don't think. So we have to have the bullshit with the good shit. It's all shit, though. Why you got to say nasty shit, Ray? Oh, I'm a nasty motherfucker. Anyway, let's move on to the next topic because I've been a state on that too long. Two Funny Mamas won an NAACP award for their podcast. They didn't even believe they would win. They thought that Michelle Williams was going to win over them because, um, of course, Michelle Williams is from Destiny Childs. So all it took was Beyonce. They, they kept saying all it takes is Beyonce to tweet out one good goddamn time, then it's completely over with for us, you know. Then we lost. But I'm... Um, but fortunately, they did not lose. Awesomely, right? And speaking of comedic shows um, and all that kind of stuff, Nick, 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 Nick with the dick. Nick with the pipe down his damn leg almost to his goddamn kneecap. Shit, that nigga got a big schlong. My lot today. Go, go. 40,000. Show yourself the show who gives you that gawk gawk 3000 with the twister wizard 7000 dripping down to the balls like Niagara Falls having your face looking like you're taking a dump. Anyway, Nick Cannon, that's his whole intro, honey. <laughs> Cause that nigga, if you ain't seen it, go look. Nick with the dick, that nigga show got canceled and it's so unfortunate, but I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. He's not that interesting. I'm like, damn, Nick, you are fucking boring, nigga. Like, you really are boring, Nick. I don't, I, I couldn't take it. I'm like, um, yeah, no. Um, but I did watch for the dick all the time. Every time I cut it on and I seen the dick, I was like, oh my God, I have to turn this off. I'm lusting. I'm sitting up here fucking lusting, looking at his dick down his leg, almost to his kneecap. And I'm just like, is it hard? Me being a gay man, like I love dick. Excuse me. But I do. I love dick. Um, I love my husband's butt. Like, his ass is just beautiful and so big and voluptuous and just, uh, I, like, I don't even want to go deeper into that. I, I, I thought about making a late night show so we can talk real nasty and freaky and talk about our relationship and stuff, but we'll have to go live with that. Um, I was thinking about doing that so we can have callers call in, but we might have to do that on the Patreon. I will do that. I will do that. But that'll be a Patreon thing where you guys will have to pay like $2 to get in, $5 to get in. And then we could talk real nasty and tell you guys our fetishes and the crazy things we do. You know, if you want to hear about that, just comment below. Um, comment, tell us, hit me up in the DMs. Um, we will go there. We'll go there. Anyway, um, see there, I got all off. But um, I love dick. I love my husband's ass. I don't like everybody's ass. But I love my husband's ass. And I love some ass. Um, but not everybody's ass. I don't do ass like that. But the dick, Nick with the dick, that nigga, like, I used to watch this show, like, you gotta cut it off because I'm just, like, lusting, lips. I'm dripping. I'm drooling. I'm like, ah, Nick, why are you coming out here like that? It's like somebody put his dick in the back of their throat before the gates open, before the doors open. Somebody went, <laughs> That's what it seemed like. I'm just saying. I'm just like, damn. Like, this nigga come out brick. Like, was somebody riding it right before? I'm so, I have a graphic mind. I have a really graphic mental. So I'm like thinking of everything every time this nigga come out like that. And then after it became a viral moment, because I've been seeing it. Then when it became viral, I'm like, y'all missed everything. Shit. I've been watching this shit every week since the show dropped. 
Nick coming out here like that. I don't know if that was his pipe for real or if that was something he was trying to just gain our attention with because I know he was doing it for the views. He was trying to get his ratings up, 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 up. And when he, when everybody noticed it, he thought he really hit the jackpot, but really he didn't because the show still failed. Um, and nobody was happy about it. He had to put it up. And it still was showing every now and again. He would even come out and say, let me put on my coat and shit because, you know, I think he knew that at this point, I can't keep it tamed. I don't know what the fuck be going on in the back before he come out, but that nigga be brick. Who the fuck getting him dressed with that dick all in their face? You know, who him and him up? And the dick all right there, that bow, 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 right in your face, right on your lip, right on your nose, on your forehead, while you trying to get him dressed, all in your hands, on your fingers. you like, oh my gosh, it's a brick. It's a full bottle in your pants. But Nick has been canceled. I knew it was going to happen. He was not funny. He has other shows. He has his radio slash podcast show. He has his Wild and Out show, which is really a, a really good show. And not only that, he's hosting The Mass Singer, which they're paying him a lot over there at Fox to, to host The Mass Singer. Um, so Nick ain't losing no check. He ain't losing no sleep. He probably don't mind. He probably don't give a fuck that this happened to him. He's probably like, you know what? This happened. Oh, well. I got to do it. This, 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 this is the Urban Binge the Radio. Radio. Shows being canceled. Not only is Nick Cannon being canceled and our girl Wendy Williams is being canceled. When I tell you that broke my heart that Wendy Williams is being canceled, oh my God. Um, I don't know. Let me say allegedly. Um, maybe, maybe Wendy Williams will be back. Hopefully she will be back. They say she's coming back for a podcast. Okay. They say she's coming back for a podcast. If she did, which I already said that before, go watch my other shows. Um, she will blow the fuck up. Like, she's definitely going to be up there with Joe Rogan. I can't say that she's going to beat Joe Rogan because white people support white people like hell. Um, but she's going to be up there with him. If not beat him, she'll be right behind him almost damn near neck and neck. Wendy ratings and, and views are going to be, like, out of this world if she got back on the radio or on a podcast because it's going to be just like radio. And it's at her own pace, her own time. I think that's going to be awesome. And I will be listening every single day because it's Wendy Williams. Come on now. Um, of course, you're going to have to pay for her podcast. It's not going to be a free podcast. She's definitely going to be making you pay for it. Although it should be free because they're paying her so much. People like us, we're not even getting paid until we garner a certain amount of downloads and likes and views and listens um, for a podcast before we can even get paid. Wendy Williams is going to get paid millions and then probably still charge people a subscription fee to listen to her podcast monthly or weekly, probably, which is going to be horrible. Like, wow, really, Wendy? That's what you're going to do to us? You getting paid millions for doing the damn show. You can only do this. Anyway, I don't know if that's true, but that'll be awesome. She's blowing everybody out the water. Everybody might as well just be like, you know what? I'm a simple podcast. Wendy and Joe Rogan take over by. Um, but like I was saying, not only are those two shows being canceled, but finally the real is being canceled. I think this show should have already been canceled. I'm so sorry to say this show should have been canceled. Um, they're not. They're, it's not interesting to me. Like um, since Tamar left, honestly, I know that people probably are like, you know what? Don't say that. Don't say that. Yes, since Tamar left the show, the show has been going down, 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 down. Honestly, um, the show has not been the same. So um, I can honestly say that Tamar leaving the show was probably one of their worst moves that they could have probably made. I don't know what the fuck she did so bad that made y'all kick out a girl like Tamar who was really bringing the ratings, okay? She was hot. She was bringing the ratings. Y'all know that. Y'all can't deny uh, Tamar Shima Rex and whatever fuck she called her. No, I ain't doing that. She's here. Who is she? Me. She, me, her. No, she don't do that. Mm -hmm. She who? Me, she, her. Who is her? Who is she? she? Well, me, her. her. That, that's me. called, her. That's called third person, it, Tamar. What? Wow, for real? Yes. Uh, her. I don't know who she is. And if I'm here with some she. She's talking about she get on my damn nerves sometimes. But Tamar Braxton show, The Real, is being canceled. But it kind of explains. It goes to Lonnie Love being so overrated or not overrated, um, over the top with her interviews. Lately, I feel like Lonnie has really been digging into people's ass, trying to get a viral moment, like asking some Barbara Walter. Bow wow wow wow, I hated it. I didn't like it. Um, I didn't want to be bow wow wow wow. Oprah Winfrey type of questions, Diane Sawyer type of questions, really trying to get under people's skin and create a viral moment for um, the real. And I've been saying this for a long time that Lonnie is really trying to keep this show around because then what is she going to do? She's not a funny comedian. She has to go back to the comedy clubs probably. She's not being booked for movies. Her, Kim Whitley, um, Sherry Shepard, a lot of those comedian ladies are not being booked for no gigs, for no movies, and it's so unfortunate. Lonnie Love is not being booked. I don't know what's the last movie she's been in. It probably didn't make much. 
But um, she probably could go out and do movies. Lonnie is not scared to pitch herself. So better believe we're going to see Lonnie love around these streets. I'm telling you. We're going to see Lonnie around these streets. Please believe that. See you later, The Real. Um, I'm not going to miss you. Adrian Ballon has her new gig on that. So Raven, so she ain't got nothing to worry about. And they were thinking about bringing Jeannie Mai to um, Atlanta Housewives and replacing her with Candy, allegedly, is what the news was. But I highly doubt that. Did you hear those rumors that you were out this yeah. season? I don't know who makes these rumors yeah. up. I think somebody secretly wants to get rid of me or something. <laughs> I'm like, uh, <laughs> too late. I already right. filmed season 14. Right. On top of the rumor, they said that Jeannie Mai was replacing you. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I, I'm cool with Jeannie. Yeah. We're friends, so let me be the one to bring her on. There, I was going to say, why not make that happen? <laughs> so how would you describe the vibe for season 14? The vibe is amazing. If anything, they'll probably just bring Jeannie Mai on because she's probably going to move to Atlanta after the show ends to be with Jeezy and raise her baby a little bit and probably take on some gigs that'll be around the Atlanta area for her. Um, more than likely, they'll probably want her on E! News Network. I would not be surprised if Adrian Ballon and um, 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 they'll, those ladies don't end up on another hosting uh, celebrity gossip news type of show. I'm not going to be surprised. Like, Lonnie Love might move over to the talk. I wouldn't be surprised if she moved over to the talk. Or if they create a show for Lonnie Love, Deb Martin Mercury, because um, Sherry Shepard did kind of reveal on her podcast that Deb Martin Mercury is, um, now that those shows are canceled, they're looking for a duo show. Um, and she was thinking about, she said she's been asking them, begging them to do Kim Whitley and Finesse um, a show together um, as a duo show. Right. We wouldn't be able to do it live in L.A. That'd be 7 o'clock in the morning. Nobody's up. That'd be tough. What's the likelihood yeah. of Kim pulling something in like that? Her own talk show? Yeah. Why not? Well, unfortunately, Nick Cannon was canceled, uh, mm. unfortunately. But that is public news. And so there actually is a spot open because Nick Cannon is not there and they don't have another show. Debmar uh, had Wendy and they had Nick, but Wendy's episodes are ending. Her season ends in June. So mm. it was always, I think people are under the misconception that it was going to continue, yeah. but it wasn't. Her season ends at the end of June. So then another show takes that time slot place, which is mine. Right. So with Nick Cannon's spot being open, they only have my show. So they do need something to fill that slot. And I think that uh, Kim and Finesse would be amazing. So if there are people watching this right now, let us know if you think that Kim and Finesse should have their own talk show. Because Absolutely. if you do, then you need to go to either the Wendy Show Facebook page and say it, or go to the Wendy Show Instagram page and say it. Because the producers read that. They really read the Facebook page. That's and isn't I that wild? How we can you can essentially text your favorite people <laughs> now through social media. You can direct contact. I get so many messages, but see, I, I get a lot of. And I don't think it should be those two. I think that Vivica Fox and Carson Kressley hosting is going to be great. Um, and um, I think that those two deserve a spot. Um, I think that's going to be like immaculate or Carson Kressley and Bevy Bev or even um, Kim Whitley and um, somebody like, um, you know, DC Young Fly to bring in the young people. Um, I think that would be a really good show, um, battling it out with Sherry Shepard. Um, but definitely not Finesse Williams and Kim Whitley. Finesse Williams and Kim Whitley are not funny together. They are a bit much um, over the top. They need to tone it down because they are really, really active. Like excited, overly sugary, excited. Like they just swallow a cup of sugar or something. I'm like, calm down. They acting is very over the top. Anyway, moving to a more serious thing. Okay, the White House. Um, so as you know, we're in this whole crazy thing with, um, you know, um, you know, Russia and um, Ukraine. I don't know if I can even say these names. That's why I'm hesitant. Because I don't want to get the podcast shut down. I don't want to get YouTube shut down because any misinformation out there, they are shutting it down. And I'm not trying to give any type of misinformation. Okay, but we do know that there's a war going on. Um, although Russia is um, being um, brainwashed by their government and being told otherwise that what's really happening is not happening um, and being shown other things. The idea of the Russian military leveling Ukrainian cities and killing innocent people was never going to be popular in the first place. 
which is probably why Putin has now gone into overdrive to make sure that in Russia, nobody hears about it. A similar scene played out at Russia's oldest liberal radio station, Echo of Moscow, which says it's been forced to close. We just can say welcome to the USSR. A new Iron Curtain has fallen in Russia, and this time it's an information Iron Curtain. That's why most Russians don't know what's really happening in Ukraine. The Kremlin today blocked Facebook and Twitter, and there are no independent media outlets left. Vladimir Putin signing a law tonight making it a crime to spread what the Russian government considers fake news about the conflict in Ukraine. The maximum penalty, 15 years in jail. Independent Russian news outlets have always found it difficult to operate. Now it's impossible. The staff at Moscow's last independent TV station walking off set as their final symbolic broadcast played out. Yeah, just think about that for a moment. The only place to get any news in Russia now is state media. That's it. Putin even shut down Facebook in Russia. I really appreciate our United States, Jen Psaki. Uh, I don't know her name. She's like the press lady, you know, the lady with the freckles and the red hair who comes out and speak in front of the green, the green, the blue curtains and blah 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 blah. Y'all know him to my Jim Pasaki. She did a whole interview, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys listen to this whole interview. This not interview. This whole little social media video she did to kind of explain to people why the gas prices are so damn high right now and what would happen if they even tried to lower the prices and basically giving an explanation and a slight sorry about this mess, guys. But Russia and Putin is the reason why. It was very classy, very clean, and just, I loved it. You may have noticed this week that your gas prices have gone up. I want to talk to you a little bit about why. A lot of it has to do with Vladimir Putin. The reality is that Russia is one of the three largest oil producers in the world. And the fact that they have started this conflict, invaded a foreign country, and they are such a big producer of oil in the world, is the reason why the global oil markets are disturbed right now and why your gas prices are going up. The president's going to do everything he can to bring down the price of gas for the American people. But there are a few facts you should be aware of. U.S. production of oil and gas is rising. In fact, in the first year of the Biden presidency, there was more oil and gas produced in the United States than in the first year of the Trump presidency. And there's opportunities to produce more from here. But part of this is on the oil companies. Right now, there are 9,000 approved unused permits that oil and gas companies could tap into now to ramp up production. So what the president is doing is ensuring we're taking steps here to get more oil out into the global marketplace. That includes the release of 40 million barrels from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve back in the fall, and he just announced their planned release of an additional 30 million barrels. The only way to protect the United States over the long term is to become energy independent. That's why the president has been so focused on investing in clean energy technologies so that we can rely on that and not President Putin to set the price of gas. The Trump administration would never, uh, would never. This would never have happened if I were your president. Um, but they did, and I really, really, really love that Pasaki and Joe Biden them decided to do a social media video and let everybody know the real deal. What's going on? Because I know y'all see that gas prices are at, honey, we're going to Disney World prices. Seriously. So I really appreciate that, Jim Pasaki, um, for doing that, because that's just like real down to earth, real in the now, real um, new millennial um, type of shit for you to go on social media and just give us a whole breakdown like listen here go what it is this the fuck shit that's going on our bad we ain't mean to cause this shit putin is his fault go get his ass if y'all want to i'm like damn she ain't playing no game <laughs> that is funny i wanted to say this that um speaking of russia and ukraine there's this young man, and I'm gonna do another video about this. Um, a whole, I'm gonna do a whole video about this um, boy, these two people, and I don't wanna find anybody else because if I find anybody else, that's gonna be a lot of talking and a lot of chat and a lot of running my mouth that I'm gonna have to do. Um, so I don't wanna find any other person. But um, Jay was on YouTube, my husband Jay, my wife. Okay, Jay is transitioning, so when you guys hear me say wife, um, I'm speaking of Jay. Um, we are gonna do a show about that as well, specifically about his transitioning. Um, we will do a show about that. But um, Jay, he was watching YouTube and he went across a video uh, regarding um, the Russians. And it said, how Russia, life in Russia after the sanctions. 
and I'm just like, oh my God, what is this video? Like, what is this that we've run into? Um, and so I got caught up in the video. It's this guy on YouTube, he's a vlogger, and um, he's just showing how it is in Moscow, Russia, um, while the war is going on. Hi guys, adorables. For new friends, we are a simple Russian family. Our dream is uh, speaking English, English, and we learn English by old American movies. In this video, we are going to show you actual crisis on gasoline in Russia. Let's go. We are going to show you different prices on uh, three different gasoline stations. Because in Russia we have uh, we have three popular gasoline stations, and the price is a little different. Okay, we are coming to a gasoline station. These prices and cars. Okay, guys, this is actual prices for this day in uh, this gasoline station. Guys, now I am going to translate these prices to USA gallons, because uh, we use liter system. This price is in liters in Russia. Okay, guys, prices in this gasoline station. 92 octane gasoline price. 49 dot three cents for one liter price in usa dollars i know that in canada and great britain you use a liter system in usa you use gallon system so for usa people 1.8 dollars for one gallon it is a for 992 octane gasoline and uh, 95 octane gasoline 54 cents for one liter and uh, two dollars for one gallon diesel 51.7 cents for one liter and uh, 1.9 dollars for one gallon it is a price in this gasoline station and uh, we are going to next gasoline station Guys, we are going to next gasoline station. <coughs> Adorable. So we have uh, gas stations. It's uh, for uh, who who use natural gas in their cars. But in this video, I am gonna not show you. Um, and then upon watching him, his wife and his daughter um, navigate through Russia daily, show us how the gas pipes are, show us how the houses are, show us how poverty is there, show us how the grocery stores, show us what the sanctions are doing to them, show us how the internet is. This guy is very informative and very in the, the know. He knows that no matter what his government is trying to put in their head and make them believe about what's going on in real life out here in the world with Ukraine and Russia and this war, um, he's telling us, making us know that um, I know what's going on. No matter, Putin controls their internet over there, okay? He controls the internet. He controls what they see, when they see it, how they see it, and what's being said on there. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so he controls all of that. And so what they believe, and I'll get into how I know what they believe, what they believe over there is that there's nothing going on because that's what he's telling them, that this is a lie, this is a lie, and this is a lie. They're lying, they're lying, they're lying. You know, and he is the big-ass liar. He's the fucking liar um, that need to be taking the fuck out they need to take him just the fuck out take him out shit anyway at first let me say this at first i was feeling like you know what they need to take the entire russia out Drop this 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 is the urban binge, binge radio, radio. Boom. everybody over there the children and all is what i felt like for real i felt that way Хотели бы вы сбросить ядерную бомбу на США? Конечно, нет. Нет. Возможно. Зачем? А зачем конкурент России? Я то как африканский, то могу сказать да. Наверное, да. Разумеется. Нет, несколько бомб. Скорее да, чем нет. 
Да, надо сбросить. Нет, я за мир. Нет, я бы сделал это на России. Нет, я бы не хотел сбросить ядерную бомбу на США. Нет войне. Россия, Украина. Всем мир. Конечно. Мечтаю это сделать. Нет, конечно. Нет. 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 Нет, конечно. Нет, конечно. Нет. 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 Почему? Потому что ядерная война это хуево. Если мы ебанем на них, они ебанут на нас. Но это время глупость политикой. Нахуя в это вникать? Нет. Почему? Потому что это смерть. Я против насилия и смерти. Нет. 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 А, ни в коем случае. Миллионы мирных жизней. Нет. Нет. Скорее нет, чем да. Нет. 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 Я нет. Конечно, не хотел бы. Потому что из-за этого получилась бы цепная реакция и всему миру было бы пизда. Нет. Нет, ни в коем случае. Нет. Нет, тогда придет кредит человечества. Сам. Нет, я не умственно отталкиваю. Нет. 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 Резко против. Нет. 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 Не, не. А, нет, не хотел бы. Нет. А, нет. Хотели бы вы спросить ядерную бомбу на США? Нет, конечно же. Нет. Да нет, наверное. Я не хочу, чтобы ядерное оружие использовали в принципе. Нет. 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 Вообще не хочу никакой бомбы бросать. Нет. Ну, бомба на США. Нет. Я не хочу. У нас США. Нет. Ой, бля, нет, до свидания. Нет. 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 Конечно, нет. Это очень глупо. Нет. Нет. А? Э, нет. Нет. Я пацифист. Нет. Пускай они за Югославию мне ответят, а потом уже будем говорить. Да. Фи, блядь, такой страны не должно быть, нахуй. Это лишнее в нашей жизни. And then I had to think about it for a moment. Like, you know what? There are people over there, and that's why we need to be on this podcast together. But we always, he has something to do, I got something to do. We can never meet up and make our schedules match and make it work together. But we will soon. Um, he was telling me, you know what, you, we, we could do that, and that would be nice to just end them and end him. But there are innocent people over there who actually don't like him and who did not vote for him. He put himself in power. You know what I'm saying? So we don't want to drop up on them. And um, we killing innocent people who wish they weren't living that life instead of taking him the fuck up out of here and giving these folks a new life in Russia. Um, so basically, I don't want to be saying the wrong thing because I don't want no spy nobody coming after me, honey. Uh, anybody listening? But I do think that um, he is—he's just a fuck boy. I think he's a fuck boy. I think it's real fucked up that these people over here. Uh, brainwashed. So many people are brainwashed. So as I'm watching this guy and him navigate around Russia, um, I end up running into um, another guy. A couple days later, a younger guy um, who doesn't have kids. This guy looks like he's probably in college, freshman in college, or maybe a um, sophomore in college, maybe. Um, and so I'm like, who is he? And his his stuff is like, what what do Russians think? about the sanction what do russians think about what's going on in ukraine what does you know um here's how we feel here's how russians feel so i'm like oh my god who is this and in the middle of the war these people are vlogging right so i go to his channel and he's showing us the youtube i mean he's showing us the grocery store just like the other guy but he's in another part of russia and he's going to the schools talking to different students at high schools middle schools um colleges And people on the subways and just everywhere around Russia, he's getting the, the you know, trying to find out. One thing that Russia has told them is that it's no war going on. It's a special operation. And he Putin has made it illegal for them to say the word war or to speak of war. They cannot speak of war. They cannot say the word war. They have to say special operation and speak sparsely of it. What do you think about the war? Война это очень плохо. Я лично знаю некоторых людей с Украины. У меня эта тема очень печалит. Я хочу, чтобы скорее это все закончилось. А, извините, я аполитичен. За это меня посадят. Любая война это, это ужасно. Мне мама все время говорила, лишь бы не было войны. Все что угодно, голод, холод, лишь бы не было войны. И это очень страшно, что это пришло. У меня и сын, и внук, и еще один внук, и все мальчик. Я, к сожалению, не могу это комментировать, потому что это сейчас опасно. Даже называть вещи своими. Опасно, можно. 
как-то могут это как-то интерпретировать неправильно с моей стороны, и я могу попасть под даже уголовную ответственность. Yes, we were editing this video right now, and it turned out that the term war is going to be like not allowed to use in Russia because they call they say that the war is fake it's not war it's a special operation so it's not war it's special operation in this video just so you know я против того что погибали люди но считаю что тут она была необходима я знала что путин шизик и такой же мне не остается война это очень плохо бесполезно абсолютно человек в 21 веке процесс войны абсолютно негуманно даже против конечно просто не тяжело я думаю любой здравомыслящий человек They can't just speak randomly of it. I see a lot of them over there after watching some of these videos. They say I'm not an analyst. I'm not a po politician. So I don't want to speak on it. Um, I'm not a special analyst. And I'm like, okay, so they must be brought up to know to to um it must be instilled in them um, coming up that if you're not an analyst or a specialist on something, don't speak on it. And a lot of them don't speak politics. A lot of them are very scared to talk to this guy on his camera about politics. They're really afraid and um, like, you know, very step backish about it. Um, and so I'm just like, wow, I'm so happy that I found these two YouTube channels because they are so informative. So what I did was I tweeted ABC News, Inside Edition, um, and several other news outlets to let them know that they should go on YouTube and kind of look at the vloggers in uh, Russia. And I'm pretty sure there are some in Ukraine as well. We just never thought about that. But they should go look those up and look at these people actually vlogging, showing what's actually going on since we can't get cameras over there and see what the real deal is. We can only see the social media stuff that's going viral immediately instead of seeing the people actually on YouTube vlogging in their immediate town. I know that it's a small vicinity, but it's still um, a good look. Still a good watch. Um, it, it's not a waste of time. It's very, very informative to see what the sanctions have done. Hello, guys, and welcome to Different Russia channel. My name is Valeria. Uh, my husband, his name is Alex, and uh, we have a small YouTube channel which is called Different Russia. Why it was called Different Russia? Because we did not speak about politics, and we are not going to talk about politics on our channel. Because of um, our uh, today's situation in the world, uh, our channel became rather popular, and we have many new viewers. So, yeah, uh, everyday life of uh, an ordinary, ordinary people. yeah, of an ordinary Russian uh, family. So, guys, um, at the moment we go to McDonald's, and we will show you what is happening there. Because yesterday McDonald's announced that uh, they uh, leave Russia. So let's go and have a look. Alex, we did not go to McDonald's when it was just open. We were not invited <laughs> to that happy day for many people. Uh, but today. We will go to goodbye party. Я помню, тогда на Пушкинской я открылся первый Макдональдс. The first McDonald's guys was opened many many years ago uh, on Pushkinsky Square in the center of Moscow, and there were crowds of people, really crowds. A few words, guys, about Russians and McDonald's. The majority of Russians like McDonald's. As for our family, we do not go often to McDonald's. Approximately, maybe three or four times a year when we go somewhere. As for me, guys, there is nothing, almost nothing to eat there because of my health problems. And also I'm a vegetarian and not much food for me there. As for Alex, Alex loves McDonald's. <laughs> of course, guys, McDonald's food is not very healthy. McDonald's is rather popular with young people because they can buy potatoes and stay in McDonald's as long as they like. Uh, they may talk, they may check their computers, their cell phones. So it's not forbidden to sit in McDonald's for a long time. And young people try to use such opportunity uh, to meet with friends in McDonald's, for example. McDonald's is very popular among small kids. Burger King also is rather popular here. And during the previous, I think, three or four years, a lot of Burger King cafes were opened in Moscow region, for example. I do not know about other regions, but in Moscow region we saw a lot of new Burger King cafes. Some people loved McDonald's more, some people loved Burger King more, but now when we have no chance to choose where to go, if Burger King stays in Russia, 
it will be the real king, guys. As you may see, guys, smoke from the chimney. Uh, it means they work. But as you may see, no cues. That is Makafta here. And also here, no cues. Let's try to sneak inside and have a look what is going on there. Alex, people ask why you put a mask on your face. Почему ты в маске ходишь? We have the law guys in public places such as shops and, I don't know, banks, in cafes, we have to wear masks. You see guys, here is the info that you have to put a mask on your face to wear gloves, also one and a half meter of social distancing. So let's go inside. So guys, let's choose the language, English. Alex loves burgers. Big Mac. Where is Big Mac, Alex? Beef. Beef? Big Mac, 140 rubles. About $1.40 today. Big Tasty, $3.25. So guys, you see the price and you just do not pay attention to the last two numbers. For example, here is $1.25. Here is 51 cents. Uh, two dollars and oi, two dollars and forty-nine cents. Fish. Mm -hmm. So I will take filial fish. I think. Yeah, this one. Today it is oh, one dollar forty-five cents approximately. No, I have never. About Coca-Cola drinks. Yeah, drinks. Coca-Cola guys also lives. So about seventy cents. 55 cents for a 250 milliliter cup. Yeah, half a dollar. So what else? Hot drinks. So coffee, different kinds of coffee, also about one dollar, one and a half dollar. And potatoes, traditionally Alex loves potatoes. So uh, 85 cents. One dollar thirty-five cents, thirty-nine cents, so one and a half dollar for potatoes. McDonald's Corp said Tuesday it is temporarily closing all eight hundred and forty-seven of its restaurants in Russia. That move is adding to increasing pressure on other global brands to pause operations in the country following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Closing McDonald's restaurants is also symbolic in Russia. The first location to open in central Moscow was in 1990 and became an iconic symbol of flourishing American capitalism as the Soviet Union fell. However, McDonald's said it would still keep paying its 62,000 employees in Russia. Starbucks is also temporarily shutting down its shops in Russia as well. Meanwhile, on the same day, Coca-Cola stepped forward to say they too are suspending business in Russia. Coca-Cola says its business in Russia and Ukraine contributed between 1 and 2 percent of the company's net operating revenue in 2021. Soft drink rival Pepsi is among the latest Western companies to pause operations in the country. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Stephanie Officer. One of the videos showed the Russians in Ikea one last time, which was about three nights ago. Ikea shut down there, and he actually went live to show that Ikea was shutting down in Russia. Um, here's what we're doing right now in Ikea. We're getting stuff. It's on sale. They're shutting down no longer. Coca-Cola. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
but everything is closed at the moment. Uh, the shop is closed for entrance and now only uh, people can leave the shop, uh, luckily with purchases, because uh, queues, you cannot imagine how long queues today. Uh, all the storage, that is a long, long queue up to the flower department. Alex came. Uh, nowhere to park. So now we will be very quick to put everything inside. Now guys, is one more challenge. We have leave the parking lot. <laughs> Trash is going on here. Uh, a big traffic jam to leave uh, the parking lot. So we are stuck here uh, at the exit from this shopping plaza. Uh, today was the final day. IKEA is closed. IKEA, how you call it? IKEA is closed. Russians say IKEA. So it is closed for unknown period. So uh, no entrance at the moment. No one can enter the shop. Uh, it works only um, to leave the shop. So you may pay and uh, leave the shop with your purchases. Like all these places and they're vlogging in the middle of this stuff shutting down. So we don't know if Putin is going to feel so hit that he's going to stop his shit. But I am going to come to you guys with, a, with more of a, a more in-depth video about this whole Russia thing. And I guess the word is propaganda. Um, he's putting stuff out there to make them believe one thing instead of making these people know what the truth is. But as you watch these YouTube channels, you see that not everybody is stupid. Some of them have these secret um, internet access codes where they can get into the internet and actually um, see what's going on in the USA and look at the internet as if they're in the USA instead of looking at the internet as if they're in Russia. Hi guys, I gotta say one thing before we start. We have to mute some people's speeches in this video because they said some really crazy stuff and they might have some problems later. But they still have the subtitles on, so I hope it's fine. Боитесь ли вы высказываться о нашей власти? Нет, не боюсь. Почему? Потому что считаю, что мнение каждого человека должно быть, и оно должно быть высказано. Нет. Нет. Наверное, да. Нет. Не особо. Дома нет. А так? Не хотелось бы, наверное. Нет. Несмотря где, если близко, как будто нет. Ну, так относитесь. Хорошо. Да вроде причин пока не было бояться. Немного. Ну, какие опасения? Попасть. Полицию. Мне не нравится то, что сейчас происходит, но я на это никак влиять не могу, кроме как митинга, наверное. Нет. Лучшая власть, которая была на протяжении 30 лет. Самые лучшие люди сейчас возглавлены. Владимир Владимирович Путин – самый лучший президент страны за последние 30 лет. Нет. У нас власть хорошая и самая лучшая. Путин лучший. Высказываться они тоже не боитесь. Ну а что могу сделать? Посадить? You guys, sorry for interrupting. Uh, as you might have heard already, internet doesn't work properly in Russia. They blocked Facebook, they blocked actually lots of other sites. And you know, if you still don't know how to visit blocked, blocked sites, you gotta use VPN. That's, that's what can help you. And if you still don't know what VPN to use, you gotta try Atlas VPN. Link will be in the description. You know, one interesting thing that I mentioned, they give you, I mean, not you, but if you are Ukrainian journalist or a blogger, they will give you VPN for free. Uh, but if you're not, they have a special uh, type of subscription. Uh, you can get three years for only $199 a month. I think it's uh, it, it's actually the best VPN deal in the market, uh, so you gotta try. It's not only uh, VPN; it, it's actually also it, it, it actually also prevents from DDoS attacks, from malicious attacks, from advertisements. This is actually also advertisement, but I'm not sure if <laughs> but Atlas VPN will help you with this type of advertisements. So let's go. Link will be in the description. <laughs> Нет. Нет. Ну ты еще за Путина, правильно? Мы сами за себя. Нет. 
потому что меня интересует на самом деле ситуация в стране и это во-первых, а во-вторых, ну, я не могу никогда в данный момент участвовать в ее жизни, а политической, там, голосовать или еще что-то делать, потому что мне просто 17 лет. You know, there's a cold, there's this whole nerd shit that they do, which the boy who I'm talking about, these two Russian boys would definitely know how to get past this. And I don't know if YouTube has shut themselves down over there, but they're definitely on YouTube daily posting about this, and I love it. I'm gonna try to reach out to him, um, one of them, because one speaks better English than the other, and I don't want to have such a hard time trying to talk to the guy with his baby and his wife. And the other young boy speaks a lot better English than the other guy. But either one, I guess I can reach out to both and just do an interview with one. Because I don't want to do an interview with both. I don't know what kind of codes they're going to be hooking up to talk to me. And I don't know what kind of towers is connecting from Russia to here. And I know damn well the FBI is going to be listening. Because um, it's Russia. And I'm in New York City talking to somebody in Russia. So hopefully I can get that interview coming really soon. Um, just kind of interviewing him and finding out. A little more in-depth stuff because his videos are so quick. He's trying to interview these people, get in and get out real quick. Um, this, 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 this is the Urban Binge, Binge Radio. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is the Urban Binge. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your boy Rico Bellucci. And um, I want you guys to hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you can be notified of every video that we post every time we post it. Okay, guys? Um, make sure you share, 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 guys. Make sure you guys check out our podcast. <laughs>
Oh, wow. You stayed to the very end, I see. Well, since you're here, um, do me a favor. Hit those big words down there. Subscribe. You see that? Yeah. And if you like the video or if you didn't like the video, hit that thumbs up. Also, hit that bell so you can be notified every time we go live or post a video. You don't want to miss our content. I'm telling you. You can also follow us on all social media platforms. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and a new one, Big O, at The Urban Binge, okay? You can also Google search our podcast. If you can't get enough of us, we're always posting on our podcast talking about interesting topics. Just search The Urban Binge Radio Podcast, and you can find us on several podcast platforms, i.e. iHeart, Spotify, and any podcast platform that you prefer. And after you're done with all of that, scroll down our channel, and I'm sure you'll find a lot more interesting content like this video. See you guys later. Let me finish getting dressed.